Hello lads and ladies, Brad the Fixologist here. A while back I did a couple of videos on some fountain pens and other antique dip pens I had won through a local auction house. We went through each one and assessed what needed to be done to them at the time. Some of them I had already restored to full working order while others had been patiently waiting for restoration. In today's video we're going to look at the 1920s Waterman 52 and a half V-ring top fountain pen from that collection. This pen is made from a black chased hard rubber or BCHR for short. It is finely engraved and features a ring on the lid for attachment to a lanyard or waistcoat chain fob. It is shorter than your typical fountain pen and the tip is very fine and flexible. My brief research tells me this is probably one of the more expensive and desirable pens in the hall, so restoring it is a higher priority than some of the others. I had already loosened the sections and nib by soaking them in warm water back at the time. This seemed to work out nicely, although I'd be cautious given the fragile rubber material not to go too hot with the water if you're looking to duplicate my results. With the sections apart, this one shouldn't have too much further to go. So without further ado, let's finish off this restoration. Okay, so this pen, this uh, Waterman's, has been sitting on my desk for quite a while, unfinished, and I thought I might go ahead and finish it. So. Um, I soaked this in some warm water and was able to get whatever was adhering these two pieces apart, um, to soften up enough to get them apart. We do still have the remainder of the sack down inside of there, so we'll get that out in just a bit. Uh, also, this uh, nib actually is loose and will unscrew, so that's all coming apart just fine. and. Uh, has already been pretty much cleaned. Um, I do still need to clean it a little bit. So we'll get an alcohol swab and clean these pieces off. There's a little bit of adhesive left on this. We'll chip all of that kind of off and then we'll start removing this sack. I want to get a drill bit. So stand by, let me get a drill bit and uh, some cotton swabs and we'll get after this. Okay, at this point we're just finishing this off. As you can see there I'm removing any last vestiges of the old sack. The lever is completely free and I don't see any pieces of the old sack left. Uh, but like I said, just to be sure, we're going to run some cotton swabs down in there with some alcohol on them. I could also go ahead and just rinse this out with water if I wanted to just to get the, any other tiny little pieces. But th these cotton swabs actually will go all the way inside of this since the pen is so short. And from here, it's just a matter of chipping off any remaining adhesive from this lower section. The adhesive that's used on these pens usually is shellac to hold the sacks on. At least that's what I'm replacing it with. And I think this old stuff here is shellac. It just crusts off like shellac. And the cool thing about uh, shellac is if you put uh, new shellac on top of old shellac just like if you're doing a french polish the old stuff will kind of melt into the new stuff and create one sort of seamless barrier so even if you leave any remnants of the old shellac on a pen like this it's not the end of the world it will just typically melt in with the uh, new shellac that you put on there but we'll go ahead and chip the rest of this off of here and then be ready to install the sack but first I want to look in my pen restoration supply kit here that I sort of put together over time and see if I've got any sacks that will do the job. Um, I have a couple different types of sacks. I've got uh, one here that is a number 16 that is rubber and I, I try it at first and it's just not going to fit the interior 
of the pin is, is a little bit too narrow. So what I do is I go with one of these that are intended for snorkels, for chafers, and they're made of a different material. Um, they're more of a silicone th than uh, the rubber. Typically they should last a little bit longer too, but we're gonna cut this a couple different times to get it to the right length. So first of all, I wanna trim the excess amount that's sticking out of that lower section there. So we'll pull that out right there, marking it with my thumbnail, and I'll just cut it right there at that point. And then I'll remeasure with the lower section and take a little bit of extra off to accommodate that uh, extra bit of lower section. After that, it's just a matter of putting the uh, sack on. You can see I, I put a fresh coat of shellac on that lower section there to hold the sack. And I pressed it on with my fingers, which uh, went rather well, actually. A lot of times you'll use spreaders to do that, but this didn't require it. I just pressed it on with my fingers, rolled, kind of rolled it on there gently. So anybody with one of these Waterman's pins, uh, you can use the sacks that are intended for Schaefer snorkels with these Waterman's. Now all that's left pretty much is to put the pin back together. We start by press fitting the nib into the lower section and it's held by friction. And then the lower section will marry to the rest of the body of the pin. And it's also just press fit on. I don't use any adhesive usually on these pins because I like to be able to get them apart uh, easily if I need to, to change sacks in the future. A lot of people will shellac the lower section onto the upper section, but I don't do that. So you can see there I'm adding some talcum powder to make sliding the sack into the upper section easier. And now with the pen fully reassembled, all that's left to do is fill it with some ink and try it out. So for the ink, we're going to use this bottle of Pelican Tint 4001 and it is blue in color. And when filling my pens, I like to dip them down in the ink and pull the lever a couple different times and just kind of allow it to suck up as much ink as it can. And you just repeat that process two, two or three times. And then a quick blot to get the excess ink off the nib. And it's on to try to write with this thing. The first few times I attempt to write with this pen, it is very slow going. It, it actually has a really nice chiseled appearance uh, but the it just won't flow correctly I, I cannot get the flow right and the little plastic feeder part of the nib um, just doesn't seem to want to feed correctly so I end up taking the nib back off several different times and I'll show some of the starts and stops with this pen you know to try to get it working um, reliably and it's really a shame because I'm thinking this whole time, man, it, when it does write, it looks fantastic and it feels fantastic under the hand. It just will not deliver ink to the paper. So I even try some different paper and I do get better results with some different paper. I don't know if it just, this ink maybe doesn't like this paper, but it should at least flow some ink, you know. Um, it should come try to come out, <laughs> even if it just sits on top of a piece of plastic, it should at least try to come out. But I can't even get it to hardly do that. So, like I said, taking the nib uh, back out several different times, I was finally able to arrive at a place where the uh, ink does sort of feed and does do pretty well. Um, and I have to say, I do love the feel of this nib, and I love the chiseled appearance of the lettering on this. It, it really is a very, very, very nice pen. But anyway, that's going to do it for this restoration of this Waterman's 52 and a half V vintage 1920s pin. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have hit subscribe, uh, we'll probably do some more of the pins from this haul in the future. And uh, for now though, we'll say goodbye and we'll see y'all later.